Kathy from Kathy's Jewelry and Crafts. I'm here to do another video today. Today I'm going to teach you how to make perfume at home. You only need two items. Vodka, which I have here, and essential oils, which I have a bunch of them here. So, um, let's get started. Um, also, I'm going to show you, though, how to make um, dabbers, too, perfume dabbers. And for that, you only need some kind of carrier oil, which I'm going to use this because I've been soaping a lot lately, making soap. And I've used a lot of my almond oil and grapeseed oil, so i got to replenish that. So you need that, and then you need your essential oils also. Okay, so let's get started. Some of the other things you might need, or you could improvise, are labels so that you can label everything you put in there. A funnel. You will need some glass jars for mixing. You will need some, some kind of apparatus to put your perfume in after you make it. And here are my dabber jars. I got the fancy kind and then I got the plain kind. And with the jars, you're gonna need one of these to put in there. And with the dabbers, you're gonna need this to seal it. And then some kind of top to cover it, okay? All right. And um, these I buy in bulk, as you can see. I don't know if you can see, oh, you can't see too much. But this is, these are the jars that I buy in bulk. I have like two containers of these. And then they come with the lids and with all these tops to go to them. Okay. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pour our vodka into a mixing container. And I'm just going to use this little glass jar. And then we're going to decide what scent do we want, okay? So today I think I'm going to do lavender. And I'm going to do some orange a little later. And I'm going to do, let's see what this is. Nope, peppermint. We have peppermint also. I'll do that with the orange. So for now, I'm going to do tea tree and lavender. Okay. So I need to get my label out. So these are perforated labels. I love labels. And I was at a garage sale recently, and this lady had a big box of labels, and they fit my label maker too, my uh, Munbean. And um, I think it was like 20 rolls, big fat rolls. I'll never need labels probably again in life, probably. But anyway, I used this to mark down the date first. So I think today is the 30th. I'm not sure, but I think it is. It's Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. And then I'm going to count my drops and I'll record them. So I should have, I should take this part off and stick a little dropper inside of this. So I can get exactly precise drops. But why do that? That's no fun. So I'm just going to count these. And they're probably going to come out really fast. So I'm going to put uh, 25 in here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And one for good luck. Okay, so we put 26 in there. So I'm going to write that on here. 26 lavender. And this is just a temporary label. Um, once it's done, I will make a real label for it on the computer that looks really fancy. And then I can sell it. Funny story is, when I first started making perfumes about um, maybe two or three years ago, um, I just mixed a lot of essential oils together. And some of them were hit and miss, but some of them were really, really good. But I never recorded it, and people loved them, and I could not reproduce them because I never wrote down how many drops. And it makes a difference because if I put 10 drops of this and 10 drops of that, that will be different than if I put 20 drops of that 
and 30 drops of that. That's a different smell altogether. So you have to kind of record what you do. Okay, so here's the tea tree and I'm going to put 15 drops of that. So let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so there's 15 drops of tea tree in there. Now, one thing you need to know about perfume is I'm going to mix this up. But once I pour this into the container, it is not ready. It is not perfume yet. So it'll smell good and you'll think, ooh, this is going to be great. But you have to let it sit for 30 days to cure. It has to sit at least 30 days. The longer it cures, the better. Okay. Now, in smelling that, I realize I need some more lavender because it's just not enough. So I'm going to add 20 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right. That was actually 21. So now instead of 26, we're just going to say plus 21. And I'm going to mix that up. And I just do it to smell. If I like the smell, somebody else will like it. So let me smell. Mm. I'm just not a lavender person, I think. That's a, a lot of people love lavender. So I'm going to add a little orange to it. I'm going to add 20 drops of orange because I just don't like the smell. It's like the tea tree took over also. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Okay, so that's 30 drops of orange. I'm going to add that. Okay, now let's stir that up. And I think that's what we're going to do because that should smell better. Yes, it does. Oh my God, that smells so good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is find a jar, which this one looks good to me. How about you? I don't know. I can't hear you. Okay, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the funnel inside of the jar and pour it in. And it's okay if it doesn't go all the way to the top because I can always just add some more, some vodka to fill it up. Okay, there we go. Look like I'm going to be needing some more vodka soon. All right, now that we have that, we all we need is the top. And so these come really long because they don't know which size jar you want to use and so you just cut it down and i know just by doing this about right there is where i need to cut and then i can just put it in there it's okay if it swerves around a little bit at the bottom and now i can just shake it okay now they make cosmetic dyes that i could put in here say if i wanted it yellow or if i wanted it um let me see i think right here i just saw some yellow cosmetic dye. Yep, here's some right here. And this is co this is cosmetic dye. So, you know, most perfumes are kind of yellowish. So we're just going to add a little yellow tint. So it'll look like, and yes, I should measure, but I'm not. I'm just going to put a, a little drop in the cap and pour it in there. I just want it, you know, um, the color of perfume. All right, so now we got our color. We got our, and you're not really gonna see the color because I make a professional label on my computer and I have all different size labels. So I have one that will cover the whole thing and you, you won't see the color, but I just like it to kind of look like perfume. And um, also the more yellow I would have put in there, the, the more yellow it would have been. It's kind of turning green a little bit, but that's okay. In 30 days, once it's cured, I'll look at it. I'll smell it again and see how it's doing. Mmm, that smells good. Um, and then I will add or adjust whatever I need to adjust. All right, now I'm going to show you some I made maybe two years ago. These are called Air Sense, my brand. And these are for the room. And they really smell really good. Um, now, these I did... I put like yellow on this one 
and blue on this one not just the color but I have um, like a key on my phone and it tells me blue what was in that one and yellow what was in that one so this was after I realized I had to write everything down this one was a perfume that I made about two years ago and like I told you the longer it sits the better the, the smell all right so this one is really good all of these are good all right let's make our dabbers now with our dabbers all we want to do is mix this but I've already put some in a cup so I'm not gonna use any more um, it's right here and then we can do the same thing we can um, we can add our fragrance okay the difference here is you do not have to wait because you're using a carrier oil and then you use your essential oil and that's all you need you don't have to wait there's no alcohol or anything in there okay so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe that out actually and then so there's no transference of anything and then I'm gonna put that in there hopefully you can see me on camera and I'm gonna just put that in there until it stops um, I've already put my fragrance in there but I could put 20 drops of this or whatever but off camera I had already made this up um, because I had done I did a live video first and my dog was um, barking and whining I didn't have everything I needed over here I couldn't find the rollers, so I just redid the video so now what you're gonna do is once you get it filled up and you don't have to color it or anything you're just gonna pop this on okay and then you got a dabber and this smells good right away now I make I buy Avery um, what is it half inch labels round labels to go on the bottom of this and then because I like that pretty jar so I don't want to cover that up and then I actually have little boxes that these really don't fit in um, but they fit in without closing them so but they're really pretty black boxes um, and I bought them off of AliExpress and of course everything is in centimeters and I ordered them twice the first time they were real little then the second time they were a little bigger but I really need the next size up so one day I'll order that so they'll fit right in the box but that's a nice presentation for you know give a gift to somebody or to sell online so when you are at the flea market and you see people selling all of these um, colognes and stuff what they're probably doing is buying dupes d-u-p-e-s and so you can get a dupe a dupe is just an imitation of a real cologne so if you like Aramis my favorite cologne is poison uh, the old one and so you could buy a dupe of those colognes the scents and then just like I put essential oils in there you can put the dupe in there um, and then you'll have the smell of those colognes and that's how they sell them it's real cheap because carry grapeseed oil you could buy a gallon of that for maybe ten dollars and so Think about how many of these you can make with that okay now essential oils are a little expensive I try to buy you know these were given to me by my friend spring majors for Christmas one year but I have a bunch of um, essential oils around here they are a little more expensive if you buy good ones um, but you don't have to use that many 20 or 30 drops you know you're not using that much so um, it's not very expensive if you want to start a little perfume business um, with your you know daughter or son or whatever it I would twenty dollars would get you started except for the jars you do need the jars now these jars I can remember I bought them a couple years ago maybe three years ago and but I bought a large quantity I think I have 200 and I probably I doubt if I paid more than 20 or 30 dollars for them so um, you just have to find a good supplier to buy them from. AliExpress has everything. Amazon has everything. The di Amazon, the only problem is you can't buy in mass quantity. But if you're just getting started, you know, and you're not sure how you're going to do with it, I always buy from Amazon first. And then if I see that it's a good seller, 
then I will go on to AliExpress or in China and get in bulk. Um, sometimes I still don't like it and I end up selling it again. But there are great sites online that will take all of your stuff you don't want. They're called craft craft detacher de, de stashers. I can't say the word. But anyway, it's the stashing or um your craft stuff. So people will buy your stuff. So craft stuff is something that sells very well online. And I mean if you want to get rid of all your stuff. Like I used to make pens on a lathe and um I did it for like two years and then I decided I didn't love it. I think I love a challenge. And I think what happened, there were mostly men making pens. And in my area, every time I went to somewhere where they were teaching it, it was all men and they were looking and they were older men and they were looking at me like I couldn't do it. And when you th say I can't do something, that's when I really go for it. And I think I just did it to show them that I could. And then I was a little good at it. But I have thousands of pens I made. And people aren't really out looking for pens. I sold a bunch, especially the fountain pens. But I didn't love it. So the day I decided to sell my pens and my lathe and all that stuff, it sold in like three hours on Facebook. These men bought that stuff. They bought the lathe. They bought everything in like three hours. I think I made like $600 in three hours. Just selling all that stuff back. Because I just didn't want it anymore. Same thing with my kilns. I had three kilns. I had a huge one that took up almost a room. I had one that I had specially made. And then I had one that I bought. Some lady was just selling one. And um, I bought that one. And I did fused glass for three or four years and then I decided I have enough fused glass to laugh a lot last a lifetime I'm gonna sell these kilns and when I need to make some more fused glass I'll buy another kiln and so that's what I did and within an hour I think those kilns sold, sold very well also the other thing if you're ever looking for something to sell if you see t uh, rock tumblers out out anywhere at a garage sale or whatever oh my god those sell really quickly um, every time I see one, I buy one and it sells immediately. I wanted to love rock tumbling and all of that. And, um, I did it for a while. I would take, um, stones. I would find like, um, amethyst rocks and stuff. And then, um, you know, grind it down and make something beautiful. I didn't love that either. So when I sold that stuff, it went really quickly. And the only other thing that did that was my, um, what is it called when you blow the glass, um, the rods and all of that? I can't even think of the name of it, but I was doing glass beads. Oh, my God. I was so scared I was going to blow up because you have to have like oxygen tanks and all this stuff in your house. And I was like, they going to come in here and find me all blown up one day. Nobody's even going to look for me for a while, <laughs> you know, but I just was too scared um, and I got hurt a lot in it because the glass would blow on my skin. So I did not love that. I got rid of that. So I said all that to say crafting stuff sells very well. When you're done with it, you can sell it almost for the price you bought it. Like my kiln, I think I paid seven. I had it specially made. So I think I paid like seven or eight hundred dollars for it. It was a small one. And I think after two years, I got like $600 cash for it, you know, plus shipping. And um, yeah, so um, people will buy this type of stuff. So get it. If you don't love it, put it up for sale on Marketplace or on um, eBay. Or just your Facebook or find a Facebook group dedicated to that. So if you're doing um, glass work. Go to a Facebook group that just does glass work and advertise and ask them. Make sure it's one that you can sell on and say, anybody want to kill? <laughs> About 30 people will say yes and they will cash up you the money immediately. So, um, but anyway, I like all the stuff I'm doing now. My favorite things are resin, sublimation, anything. Um, what else do I like? I like, you know, doing tumblers. I like it all, basically. Um, so those are the things that I have here. I do have a two-year rule. So if I haven't touched it in two years, usually I get rid of it. 
Um, now, the only exception to that is if I made it and it just hasn't sold, um, I'm not going to stop doing it. I wait till somebody asks me for it and then I'll make it. But usually, if it's a hobby and I haven't touched it in two years, the likelihood of me ever touching it again is very rare. So I get rid of it and make room for something else. So I've talked to you all to death. Happy Memorial Day. And I hope you learned something from this video. Um, and another use of vodka. <laughs> all right. See you on my next video. Bye.